Question number four. I prayed for someone else, but nothing happened. Why? Now, this is a big one. This is a big one. This one, this particular one takes people out of the game. This is where people get mad at God because I prayed for someone else. I prayed for my aunt, and she died. I prayed for my sister, my brother, my mother. I asked the Lord to do this or that for somebody, so-and-so, and and it didn't happen. And so I'm throwing the whole thing out. I'm mad. I'm done with it all. This prayer stuff, you faith people, you know, the the whole gamut. So what about that? Well, let's look at a scripture, and then let's talk about some of this. Deuteronomy 29, 29 is really a great passage and very comforting along these lines. The Lord our God has secrets known to no one. We are not accountable for them. But we and our children are accountable forever for all that he has revealed to us so that we may obey all the terms of these instructions. In other words, another version says it this way, the secret things belong to the Lord. Things revealed belong to us. So sometimes we pray too fast. Sometimes we pray our will, our desires too fast. If somebody asks for prayer and you want to pray for them, you certainly want to and should. But before you jump into a prayer that you may not even believe, they may not even believe, or there may not be all the facts needed to have been revealed, and then you just get discouraged by lack of an answer. It's better just to take a moment and say, okay, Lord, Holy Spirit, I'm going to pray for this person. What would you like, what would you like us to pray? I'll, I'll give you an example. A, a lady came up to me years ago in one of our other buildings at the end of service, and she said, oh, please pray. Please pray for my daughter-in-law. She is, I'm trying to think what the situation was, but it was a life or death situation. I forgot what, what she, she was dealing with, but it was a life or death situation. Please pray for my daughter-in-law. Just, just pray. We just pray that she lives. Something to that effect. Well, I mean, that's a massive request. An important request. And as I'm talking to this woman, I sense from the Holy Spirit, she's going to die. She's not going to live. So now I'm like, okay, Lord, what do I do? Because I don't want to discourage her, but I also don't want to pray a prayer I don't believe. That wouldn't help her faith because I'll pray a prayer, blah, 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 blah. She dies. Now this lady's mad at you. What should I do? So here's what I said to her. I said, well, I said, listen, I don't know your daughter-in-law, and I really didn't know this lady either. I said, but let's do this. Let's pray Since the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit shows us things to come, let's pray that the Holy Spirit will show you exactly what you need to know to pray. I thought that would be a good way that I could believe that. And then the Holy Spirit could help her through the process. So that's what we prayed. Prayed the Holy Spirit would show her things to come. And I really never saw her again, so I don't know. She may have been visiting that day. I really don't know. But see, that would be an example that I could have prayed a cookie-cutter prayer, But then what would that have accomplished for her or the daughter-in-law? See, we can pray in faith for people in our world where we have authority, your sphere of authority. So for an example, no one has more authority in your life than you. So you can always pray for your life with authority. The Bible tells us about spouses. The husband has authority in his wife's life, the wife, 1 Corinthians 7, you have authority in your husband's life. You can pray for your spouse. You can pray for your children. You have authority related to your children and other degrees of authority, but those are like the primaries. You know, for Pastor Jeff and I, in our role as senior pastors of this church in southwest Michigan, we have a degree of spiritual authority in this region. That's why we prayed the way we did at the beginning, Because I could either not do anything and kind of squander the moment or, no, use the moment you have authority. We all have authority as believers. But then specifically, spiritual authority in our particular role in the region, we can pray certain things, decree certain things, according to the Bible. We'll see one of those in just a minute. 
So, so back to, I prayed for someone and it didn't get answered. So what's the best rule of thumb? Well, the best rule of thumb is always endeavor to get them to agree with you. Or you get in agreement with them. Many times we'll go see somebody in the hospital or be in a situation and people always want you to pray. Of course, it's, it's human nature. Everybody always wants you to pray for the miracle. Pray for the highest and the best. Of course, we all want that. But it's better to say, what do you believe? When we go pray for people, usually we'll just say, we're going to agree with you. What do you believe? What do you believe in for? Where's your faith? To see what they're believing for. Because if you're believing to shoot the moon and they're believing to leave the parking lot, it, you're not in agreement. So it's always best. Now, if they don't if they're weak in faith, then you want to build their faith up a little bit and see if you can help their faith get built up so they can believe for more. But we can't impose our will on other people. For an example, if we could pray for other people our will, then we'd all pray that everyone gets saved. But you can't pray for somebody else to get saved. You can pray for them to be saved, to hear the gospel, to open their hearts, to surrender to Christ, to confess Jesus as Lord. You can pray for them to do that. You can pray that laborers come across their path and share the gospel. You can pray a lot of things for them, but you can't receive salvation for them. Every single person will stand before the Lord on their own to give an account of what they did with what they knew and what they believed. So it's not unlike praying other things. You can't receive healing for someone else. You can pray for them, though, to hear the word, for faith to come, and for them to receive their healing. The wisdom they need as it relates to doctors and surgery and therapies, all the pieces of the puzzle, all the pathways that God uses to get us healed, healthy, and whole, you can pray for them to have wisdom and the knowledge of the word to believe for themselves. And all the people said... They can agree with you. Jesus said, if two or more of you on earth agree as touching anything they shall ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. So you have to be on earth. You have to agree. They have to agree with you. You have to agree with them. And then you have to ask. It's not just agreement. It is an asking. And we agree in Jesus' name. The Bible says it shall be done. So if you can find people that will agree with you and ask in Jesus' name, that's always great. But sometimes people say they agree, but they don't. And that's reflected by what they say afterwards, which we'll get to in a minute. So back to, I prayed for somebody. It didn't happen. What do I do? Well, you should always try to pray for people, be spirit-led, and, and see how God leads you. You definitely have authority in your sphere of influence, your sphere of authority. Use it. Um, when it's somebody you don't really know or you're not really an authority in that person's life or that situation, then you seek the Lord. Lord, how should I pray? The Holy Spirit helps us. You can always pray the word. You can always pray the prayers in Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, Colossians 1. We know those are God's will for all his people. Amen. So Brother Hagen, Kenneth Hagen, where we went to Bible school, he told a story, and, uh, and this is a good story worth, worth mentioning. He told the story of somebody he went, he was called on when he was a pastor, he was called upon to go pray for this person. He got to the hospital to pray for this person, and, um, he, and this person was in a coma and not having a great, you know, prognosis. And he was getting ready to pray for this person, and he felt the Holy Spirit kind of arrested him and said, don't pray. Here's what he heard. Spiritual laws have already been set in motion and they cannot be changed at this time. Well, he didn't really know what that meant, although he knew the voice of the Lord. You know, he'd been walking with God for a long time, so he knew God was speaking something to him. Spiritual laws have been set in motion that cannot be changed at this time. He was like, Lord, what is that? So all the different preachers that were there and family members gathered around, and, you know, he prayed a blessing of some sort, but not, he didn't directly pray over the person because he felt from the Holy Spirit not to. So, anyways, a little bit of time went by, and this man died. At the funeral, Brother Hagen was at the funeral, and he tells a story that at the funeral, he was talking to either his mother or his brother, I forgot, he was talking to a family member of this 
particular person. And this person who died was a young person, 39. He's at the funeral, and he was talking to one of the family members, and they said this to him. They said, oh, you know, bless Doug. You know, God bless Doug. He always said, Doug always said, you know, Doug always said, I'll never live to see 40. Doug always said that, you know. Doug always said, I'll never live to see 40. And when Brother Hagen heard that, he felt the quickening from the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit said, that's it. Doug, with his own words, had set in motion spiritual laws that could not be changed at that time. Why couldn't they be changed? Because the only person with authority to change it was Doug. But Doug's in a coma. So Doug can't reverse what he'd said over his life the whole time. Just like Proverbs says, you're snared, you're trapped with the words of your mouth. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. Those that love it will eat the fruit. Like our words, which we'll see in just a moment, are huge. He had set in motion spiritual laws that came to pass, and they couldn't be changed by somebody just praying a prayer. Now, had Brother Hagin prayed for him in the hospital and he died, then people would be mad at God and mad about the Bible and mad about everything. The fact that he didn't pray probably made some people mad. But it's more of a learning thing for us to go, okay, Lord, you know, the secret things belong to the Lord. Very few people really knew. And in fact, what can happen sometimes is, let's say a bunch of people went to the hospital, prayed for Doug, and he died. So then what happens is then a lot of people begin to circulate the knowledge of, well, you know, God doesn't answer prayer. He's not healing today. God's not doing stuff he said he would do. And they just get vanilla in faith because of what? Because of what they don't know. The secret things belong to the Lord. Things revealed belong to us. Well, thankfully, it was revealed to Brother Hagin in that scenario, the behind-the-scenes spiritual laws. And thankfully, he shared it with us so we could learn something. But do you know, we don't always know. God doesn't always reveal things. He's not a gossip. Who's glad he's not going to reveal all your business? <laughs> he doesn't reveal everything. But he does reveal to us what we need to know. The secret things belong to the Lord. Lord, I don't know why that happened that way. I don't know why that prayer didn't get answered. I don't know. I don't understand it. God, I don't understand it. And you can ask him, Lord, reveal to me. Show me. When I'm ready to hear it, show me. You know, a lot of times we're not ready for a while to know why. Lord, help me. Reveal it to me. But until you do, I'm not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. You're good. You're God. You are not a man that you should lie. If you said it, you'll do it. Your word is true. I believe you. I believe there's some things I don't know. And I'll have to be okay with it until I know more. But I'm not going to stop believing. I'm not going to throw the Bible out. I'm not going to cast away my confidence in your word. And all the people said, amen. Now, I'll give you one couple little caveats real quick. One caveat to this is if the Lord puts upon you, for lack of a better way to say it, a, a spirit of intercession, intercession is a type of prayer, and I think we'll get into it in a couple of weeks here, but intercession is a type of prayer where God enables us to pray for people as if we were that person. We literally take their place, just as Jesus was our great intercessor, took our place on the cross. In prayer, we can take the place of another as if we were them, and that's a type of prayer. So I'm giving a little caveats here. If God gives you that, yay. Um, and like I said, unless the Lord gives you a word of knowledge that you would know why he reveals it to you, then you just have to go with what you do know. Are you guys following all this? Is everybody good? I'm trying to encourage you because we've all had situations we didn't understand. We've all had situations like, Lord, I don't get it. Say all these things in the Bible. What is going on? Well, there's spiritual laws we have to be advised of, and that's what we're doing our best to advise us, ourselves of. Some of these spiritual principles, spiritual laws that are, that are realities. and the, It's just like, I don't like the law of gravity. But it is, a, it is a natural law. And the sooner we understand it, 
the safer we'll be. And the sooner we understand it, the more we can utilize it for our benefit, a.k.a. the law of lift, a.k.a. airplanes. The more we understand some spiritual principles, the more we can engage with God in some amazing ways. And all the people said, 